Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In this video, I'm going to explain constructive and destructive interference and how to solve these problems. In my opinion, this is a really difficult topic unless you know the equation and the process, then it becomes really easy. And I think you'll agree after we do a few practice problems. So first, let's say we have two speakers, speaker one, speaker two here. And let's say we, the listener, are standing somewhere over here. Now, I'm going to say both speakers are outputting at a frequency of 600 hertz. So all these speakers are in a line, and let's say we are located 10 meters away from speaker 2. My question is, how do we need to position speaker 1 and 2, in other words, what's the distance between these two speakers, in order to have constructive interference? Remember, constructive interference means that the two speakers are going to essentially add together to make the sound appear louder than normal. And so if we imagine what this looks like, speaker two, the sound coming towards us, is basically a sine wave because that's what all sound is. It's basically a sine wave. And then we need to position speaker two such that its wave goes perfectly along with the red one. And the good news is this can happen because the frequencies of the two are the same. And if we're off even slightly in our position, then we'll get a sine wave that looks like this. And as you can see in my example, it's just a little bit off. It's a little bit to the left of the red one. So we need it to be perfectly in line. And the way we do that, luckily it's really easy. We just use one equation, and that is the absolute value of d1 minus d2 is equal to m times lambda. Now we need to explain what all these variables are. So d1 is the distance from speaker one to the person. That distance from here to here, we don't exactly know, but I know it's equivalent to 10 plus d, as you can see from the picture. So d1 equals 10 plus d. d2 is just the distance from speaker two to the person, that's 10 meters, so then D2 is just 10. M is a number of things. Basically, it's an integer. And for constructive interference, M can be 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. There are technically infinitely many values for M. It's all the integer values. In this example, M can be anything except don't choose 0. If you choose 0, then you're saying speaker 1 is on top of speaker 2. And that's kind of a nonsense solution. So ignore zero for this one. But for this problem specifically, you can choose one, two, three, any integer value for m. But I just want to warn you that for 99% of problems, you want to use m equals one. And the reason for that is most problems, not this one, but most problems say something like, what's the smallest distance that the two speakers can be? Or what's the largest distance? Or something along those lines. And when they're asking for the least or the most of something, then you're going to use m equals one every time. And then lambda, that's going to be our wavelength. And we remember wavelength has its own equation, v equals lambda times f, where f is the 600 number, 600 hertz, and v is the speed of sound in air, because that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about sound in air. So we've got to use the speed of sound in air, which is 343 meters per second. That's a number you want to memorize. So then finally, I can plug all these variables into the equation. And I can say d1 minus d2, in other words, 10 plus d minus 10, absolute value of that, which is equal to m, which we're going to use 1, times lambda. And lambda is just going to be v over f, in other words, 343 divided by 600. I plug that in a calculator, and I get 0.572 meters. And now I just got to solve for d. Luckily, the 10 and the minus 10 cancel, and the absolute value doesn't really matter right now because it's positive anyway. And one times 0.572 is just itself. It looks like this is the distance between the speakers, 0.572 meters. If you prefer centimeters, 57.2 centimeters. And there we go, that's all you do. Now I just wanna tell you if this is destructive interference, then you would literally do the same thing. The equation really doesn't change. The only thing that I'm gonna say different is that when I write this equation, instead of m equals zero, one, two, three, four, for destructive interference, I'm gonna say all the half values. So 0 0.5, 1.5, 1 
2.5, and then everything else stays the same. And this is probably not what you're gonna see in textbooks or what you're gonna learn in class. What you're Probably what you're gonna learn in class is, instead of what I just said, they'll probably say m plus 1 half, or 0.5, lambda, and then m stays the integers 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is the way I do it on the left, and on the right, this is what your textbook and professor will probably tell you. Personally, I like my method on the left better because I think it's more straightforward, but if you prefer the right, feel free to do that as well. So now I wanna look at one more problem today, and this one's gonna be much harder because the speakers will no longer be in a line. Let's say I have speaker A up top and speaker B down below, and we're gonna position ourselves right here at point P. Now, I'm gonna tell you the distance between these speakers is five meters. And I'm gonna say the distance from us to the speaker, let's say that's eight meters. Now, just so you know, we are positioned two meters below speaker A, but that also means we're gonna be positioned three meters above speaker B. And my question is ultimately going to become, what is the minimum frequency for destructive interference. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna say is, it's the same equation from the last problem. In other words, the absolute value of D1 minus D2 is equal to M lambda. And since we want the minimum frequency for destructive interference, that means that M is going to be 0.5. Probably the hardest part of this problem is figuring out what D1 and D2 are, but the good news is it's not that bad. So probably the worst thing you could do is you could say D1 minus D2 is five because you think that's the distance between the speakers. That is not true. Distance one minus distance two is like this distance in blue, which I'll call D1, minus this distance in red, which I'll call D2. See how it's the distance from the speaker to the point? That's what you gotta do. And the other thing we have to do now is that you probably see it's a right triangle. We gotta use Pythagorean theorem to find D1 and D2. So D1, let me just draw it below. Here's D1, the hypotenuse. This side of the triangle is two meters. This side on the bottom is eight meters. And to find D1, it's just gonna be D1 squared equals two squared plus eight squared. That's Pythagorean theorem for us. And then if you solve this, because I'm assuming you know how to solve for Pythagorean theorem by now, you will get 8.25 meters, that is D1. Now, D2, the bottom triangle, D2 is the hypotenuse, eight is still that leg, but this side is now three, and if you don't believe me, just look at the picture, three here, eight here, and there's a right triangle. So then here, D2 squared equals three squared plus eight squared, and solving for D2, we'll get a final answer of 8.54 meters. And now we just plug these two numbers in the formula. Absolute value of D1 minus D2 is equal to absolute value of 8.25 minus 8.54. You can plug that in a calculator and we'll get negative 0.29, but again, the absolute values make it positive. So positive 0.29 equals M lambda. And like we said earlier, M is 0.5. So 0.29 equals 0.5 lambda. Looks like we're easily gonna get lambda, just divide both sides by 0.5 like this, and if you plug that in your calculator, then you'll get lambda equals 0.58 meters. Now that's not the answer to our question. We wanted to solve for frequency, which means I gotta use the equation V equals lambda F. V is still the speed of sound, because we're still talking about sound from the speakers. Lambda is 0.58, and now to solve for the frequency, just divide both sides by 0.58 and we will get a final answer of 591 hertz. And there is the frequency, again, of both speakers. Both speakers have to be operating at the same frequency for this to work. And with that, that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, please post your questions in the comments section. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care and bye-bye.